I wrote in a journal from her class, we had a, if I am well and functioning, I'm going to retire at the age of 50 from whatever I am doing and take on a new life. Well, I crab all through the season, do some fishing when I can. And now I'm tongue and oysters, I just freeze it on my hands. It's like snow, sleep, feels like freezing rain. I'm reasonably expert um, in the knowledge base about jazz. And so early on, in, I got it into the mission statement that one of the missions of the mainstay is to protect and foster America's classical music, I call it, and that's jazz. <laughs> between 40 and 60 programs a year. I mean, it's like the real old time, you know, where every weekend there's something going on there, you know, and, yeah. and we have people who come just for that, they say, we know, it doesn't matter what you say it is. It could say Hare Krishna cymbal players or something, it's going to be really good, you know. <laughs> Four months ago, because uh, everybody knew I was retiring, uh, Gina Giacomovich, who was in the superintendent's office for Kent County Schools, well, she taught, when years ago, she taught fourth grade to my oldest daughter. She was a phenomenal teacher. And now she's in the administration. She's whatever they call them, you know, supervisor for elementary, the yak, 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 and all that stuff. And she called me into the office and she said, Tom, what are you doing after you leave the mainstay? She said, I know you. You're not going to stop, right? And I said, I don't know. I said, I'll play some music. I'm going to have a web page or something. She said, well, let me tell you, under the new STEM, do you know about these things? Under the STEM program and Common Core, right? Fine arts teachers have a difficult adjustment now because they have to maintain their, quote, discipline. They have to teach, let's say, band, right? But they also, Common Core requires them to develop multidisciplinary programs to reach out into, like, other, like, history and science and all this stuff. She said, they're going to need help. And the people who could help them, they don't know. And they are the professional artists in this community, right? And she said, there must be 50 professional artists here in Kent County, and they don't know our teachers, and our teachers don't know them. She said, how about if you, do, you become the facilitator for fine arts education, right? She said, we have no money, I can give you a small honorarium. I said, sure, I'll do that. Here I am going all the way back to where I started, right, public education, that's one thing. The best is, you know, it's, uh, it, all you have to do is look at the situation and you can find solutions. So the first two successes of this are uh, Leon Freisen, do you know him? Uh, uh, because of a grant that I have at the Mainstay, I said to the Mainstay board, I'm going to pull out a thousand bucks from that, from the John Ben Snow Memorial Trust, right? Which was supposed to be to enhance music and stuff in the public schools, yeah. right? Freisen knows this guy named Philip Lassiter, who was Prince's band leader, phenomenal trumpet player, right? We had him here last Friday oh. for his band oh. to do a workshop on, on improvisation for, you know, that's one thing. The second thing is in the same school, it just happens that this is true, the young woman who teaches drama wanted, had made all the plans, including a budget, uh, to do Greece in the spring. Yeah. Well, they jacked up the price. 
right? You know, yeah, yeah, you have to go to rights, you know, that stuff. Oh, right, right. So it became instead of a thousand, two thousand dollars. And she said, oh, yeah. so I, again, you know, mainstay, grant, throw in. I went I the less seriously going to up my uh, musical stuff. In the rain, tomorrow, go and do it all again. Rain. 